Hey guys, Kepard here. Welcome to a new car control tutorial. It's been almost six years since the leaked car control video, so this one's gonna show a different and more modern way of developing your mechanics. Also, this video is the first entry into my Air Dribbles and Flip Recess custom training pack playlist. It'll serve as a reference as I release similar packs in the future. Today, I've got 50 shots included for you to practice with as well. Let's get into it. Like previous videos, this will be a progression style tutorial. That means it's going to get harder as we go along and each row will build on what you've learned on previous drills. So we're going to start in free play on the pillars map. Drill one is this wall to wall pogo that I'm doing here. We'll just jump on the wall and then fly into the opposite wall, landing with the shell of the car first. What you'll probably notice is you're having blackout moments as the car recovers in a weird way. That's what we're looking for. Once you've gotten into a rhythm like I have, we'll move on to the next roll. Drill 2 is the same thing, but we're going to do it in ball cam. When you're air dribbling, especially in ball cam, it can be really disorienting. This roll kind of simulates that as the camera moves around. Maybe you can already tell that I'm experiencing more blackout moments. It's pretty hard to do. Anyway, once you've gotten to a good point, we'll move on to the next one. For drill 3, we're going to need the start dribble free play bind. So we'll go to settings, controls, binding, scroll to the bottom, and as you can see here, I've mapped the start dribble to left stick click. Bind it to what you'd like, but you just need it on something you can press while you're airling. Once you've done that, we'll jump off a wall, roll up right, and then just spawn the ball on top and try to keep it up. I think this is a great way to just get familiar with the mechanics of air dribbling. You can even try to pinch the ball up once you get to the wall. That's a pretty nifty skill at the high GC levels where sidewall double taps and wall stops have become really common. Once you've gotten a handle on that, just add a few little air roll spins and try to time it so that you're popping the ball up like I am here. That's going to be the basis of most of our drills moving forward. For drill four, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna start spawning the ball a little earlier just as you come off the wall, and we're gonna do it while you're upside down. You know, it's interesting. In recent years, as flip resets have become really common, this kind of works as a flip reset fake. People think you're gonna slow down and go for a flip reset, and that's when you just speed up and air dribble into the net. Drill five is a variation of the same thing, the sideways air dribble. Okay, so before we go to drill five, I wanna show you how to do some dodge control. This is where we do a diagonal dodge, just like that. And then we do a flip cancel where we pull the stick down or sometimes it's down and diagonal, sometimes it's straight down. And what we want is this effect where the nose points upwards at the end of our dodge, so like this. And then you'll start air dribbling at that point. Now, I will warn you, if this is new, this will feel extremely foreign, as your mechanics are probably based around muscle memory like speed flips or half flips. You'll need to experiment. Point your nose at random angles and then flip. Sometimes cancel your flip as soon as possible. Sometimes do it really late. There's so much variation that you can do, and that comes from just pushing yourself in weird ways. Drill 5 is dodge control basics. We'll just jump off the wall, do a little dodge and then a flip cancel and then land on the other wall. Now, one thing to note, you want to jump in a way that gets your nose pointed upwards once you finish your flip cancel. That's why you want to practice all this on the ground first before you take it in the air. You know, experiment with many different ways. Like here, I dip my nose down and do a kind of more of a front diagonal flip as opposed to doing, you know, one from an upside down position. Maybe you've noticed this all over pro play. There's so many different ways you can get that end result of nose pointed up and going right into an air dribble. Drill six is the floor is lava. It's using all the experience we built up from previous drills and puts it all together. We'll roll the ball up one wall and then from there, you're not allowed to touch the ground. 
Go in irritable, practice some dodges, and in general, enjoy the challenge of fighting through blackout moments. If you lose control or the ball goes wide, or you touch the ground, then just respawn the ball on the wall and go again. Drill 7 is spawning the ball on the wall. It's going to simulate tight control, like when you do a wall catch or dribble on the wall. And you're using that dodge to push the ball up or out, or you're using a touch and then using a dodge, just like this. I'll let this play out for a minute so that you can see a different variations of dodges and show really how it practice. This is something I've gotten really good at because I've done it for about a year as a fun warm up before I play. Now I do want to mention controller dead zone. Controller dead zone is so important in determining how your dodges look. If you want more variations in your dodges, you'll want a smaller dead zone because you have more diagonal inputs you can do. Whereas if you have a higher dead zone like 0.3, you'll have more consistent side flips or front flips, but you'll have less diagonal options. So lower dead zone like 0.05 is pretty common with pros and they tend to have really nice dodge control. Whereas higher dead zones more common with freestylers who are going to do more stalls. Stalls being one of the most common shots that freestylers will hit. You know, competitive play and pros in general will have lower dodge dead zone because they're not really looking for consistency, they're looking for variability and getting themselves at a different tight spot. So mine is 0.06, just like Vatira on Carmine, who I think has the most lethal dodge control in the world. So I'm gonna start demonstrating some flip resets. If you can't do it, that's fine. You can always try to do a more basic setup where you push the ball up the wall and you do a more basic aerial into a jump that gets you that flip reset. For me, I'm a little bit more advanced and I have a little bit of a variety in my flip reset game. Obviously not an elite variety, but it's a decent bit. And a lot of that comes from this dodge control that we're practicing just like this. So all those flip cancels can get you really weird results and that seriously increases your unpredictability and makes it really hard to defend you. Uh, it also increases your flip reset opportunities because you're extending your range off the wall when you use a dodge. So even with lower boosts, you'll get more opportunities in twos and threes. Whereas like that very basic setup where you're just pushing the ball along the wall and then you go and do your thing, that only works in ones really. Now we're going to pivot over to my ground to air flip reset custom training pack. The focus is air dribbles that start from the inside of the pitch and this pack is not really wall focused. The setups are mostly from the midfield or backfield and it's a pretty common setup in twos. Like my double taps tutorial, this will use custom box mount settings. So if you're on PC, make sure to follow along on these next steps. And if you're on console, you'll still be able to perform most of the shots. It just won't be as game like. So you'll need Boxmod installed, obviously. So once you have that from Boxmod.com, you'll want to go to your injector, you'll click on File, Open Boxmod Folder, and you'll want to go to your CFG folder. That's going to have binds.cfg, we're going to double click on that and open it up. And you should have something that looks like this in your notepad. We're going to take the code that's in my description down below, and we're going to paste it in here and we're going to click File and Save. We're going to close out. Okay, so after you've done that step, you'll want to open up your game. We're going to click on F2 on your keyboard and we're going to go to custom training. Make sure you check mark enable custom training variants and you can do mirroring if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to keep that off for now. I'm going to close this and we're going to press F3 on our keyboard and that will update our code to 90 and we'll have different variant settings, which you can tweak manually if you'd like. Um, but I will close that and press F3 and it should revert back to what it was. Now, if you want to go back to your default settings, it's negative one and uncheck mark that and that'll get you to unlimited boost with no starting momentum. But for the purposes of today, we're going to put it at 90 and we're going to have that enabled and we're going to go into our training pack. And that's our code. You can put this into browse enter code and just paste it in here and that's how you'll get to it. 
So the rest of this video is just shot examples and I'll be going through some tips and showing different techniques of how to approach these. So this first one, I like to chip the ball up. That's probably your bread and butter, the most common type of flip reset that you can set up where you get maybe like one extra touch when you're in the air and you get that final touch in the box. When the ball's coming down, you really need to fight recoil. So that's when you want to save your double jump and you just double jump into the ball. Uh, in this case, I do a variation of that where I go upside down, do a double jump as I touch the ball, and then that gets me up a little higher and pops the ball a little higher. Speaking of recoil, this one, the ball's coming down. I don't want to wait for the bounce. I want to approach the ball, so I pop it up with a single jump, and then I go. Since we practiced air dribbles at the beginning of the video, some of these are going to turn into double taps off the air dribble or just a clean dodge control into an air dribble. You know, there's lots of variations of how you can approach the final shot. So one of the things I try to do is I show that shot three different times is get really consistent at doing the basic stuff. Stuff like this, double flipper set, it looks fancy, but what I really want to be my bread and butter is touch, one extra touch, get into the box, and then do a double tap, then do a flip reset from close range. So on these next three shots, kind of think about how those car control drills would help out. There's a lot of recoil in these shots. Now something like this, I jump and I'm a little off target, so I have to correct in the air, and that's where car control comes in handy. This one's very similar shot to the pillars, kind of shots that we were doing at the end there. The nice little dodge. So shot 13 is just like the car control drills that we did at the very beginning of the video where we're on the wall, we do a little dodge control and we're going for net. This next one is a common adaptation as opponents will pre-jump so you have to get over them. And then so you have to be able to do a double tap in very tight spaces. Here's the arsenal flip reset, and then you just do a front flip. So it's a nice little technique. Um, can even be used to do musty flicks, uh, which I do have an example of later. Here's another dodge control, doing more of an upside down technique this time. This is one of my favorite setups because it's very game-like. Instead of waiting for the bounce and letting opponents and defenses reorganize, I go very early, get a good touch, and then follow an attack immediately. That's a very direct attack that puts pressure on the opponent. Shot 23 is very close to the opponent's net, so I use the side of my car to pop the ball up. That doesn't have a lot of recoil, so that allows me to start up my air dribble and then I get the flip reset after that.
This one's a little interesting because of how I landed on the ball. You know, I was, I was backwards. I went for a musty flick. It looked kind of cool in the end. Uh, that's a very unpredictable finish and something you should try to mix in into your play. So here's an example of using the arsenal reset and immediately going into a musty flick double tap. So I do want to point out that with this flip reset, you see how I'm driving off the ball and the ball gets launched. That usually happens when you're holding gas. If you don't hold gas, you'll keep the ball a lot closer on your flip reset. This next one's a little interesting. I get it on the up bounce and then I flip immediately. It's a nice little double flip reset and it's very unpredictable. I think with how good defense has become in this game where players are pre-jumping and trying to get you out of the air or trying to force you off the ball, uh, being able to get that flip reset really early and as quickly as possible is really important in your game. Here's a clean little shot that used a lot of car control. Make sure I get the bottom of the ball there, use a lot of tornado spins, and then apply the finish. It's a really nice control. I was very happy with that one. This one's pretty fun because the ball's so flat and there's a lot of recoil. I touch the ball, immediately flip, and then go for another touch. Here's another one where there's going to be significant recoil. So I turn my car upside down, do a double jump into the ball, and then that helps me uh, gain control of the ball a little better. So as we approach the end of this video, let's talk about training approaches. Start with the car control progression drills first. That's for getting the broad strokes of car control mastered, whereas the training pack is for more advanced players who are looking to refine their technique and focus on consistent finishes. As you're practicing, make sure you're playing games and pushing your mechanics in different situations. What does your experience tell you at that point? Is it first touch related? Is it power sliding and lining up with the ball? Are you losing control in the air before you even get in a spot to flip reset? Those kind of observations will tell you what you need to work on. Those are your weaknesses that you need to attack. I'd also recommend comparing yourself to pros or players that you look up to. That's not to say you should compare yourself in a way that you're beating yourself up about how you're worse than them. I don't think that's a healthy approach. But if you approach a certain pro's mechanical play with a curiosity or you come from a place of inspiration, that's seriously going to improve you. For me, it's really fun to just push myself to be better. When I see others execute a top tier mechanic, I might see some moves that I would never have considered had I only ever looked at my own game. I do want to say that this is the first of many custom training pack videos that I have lined up. This one had to be a little longer because it's the first of its category, air dribbles and flip resets, and needed a solid car control section. 
future packs will fit neatly into a playlist and reference this video. So that's the end. As always, I appreciate your support and I'm excited to see you all improve. Let's get to it. I want to see you guys flip reset all over opponents. Peace.